Hello, Internet! Macbeth's Lady here to talk about A&E's 1999 miniseries, The Scarlet Pimpernel, Season 1. The series is ostensibly based on a play and series of novels and short stories by Baroness Muska Orksy. Fans of the books will be expecting to see the story of Percy Blakeney, a cheerful, gorgeous superhero who rescues French aristocrats from the reign of terror using wits and disguise. Instead, this miniseries tells the story of Percy Blakeney, a grim, scowling corpse who sometimes rescues people using stabbing and stabbing. Percy in the books would spend weeks in disguise, building up trust and waiting patiently for the exact moment to sneak his aristocrat off, and then he'd leave behind a funny note. If things got rough, he might do something drastic, like replace the villain's snuff with pepper so that he could escape while the villain was sneezing. He was not a killer. Richard E. Grant's Percy murders an average of four guys every time he walks down a hallway. And that's not the worst thing they do to the character. No, that would be the scene where our sweet, chivalrous hero straddles a female villain, shoves a handkerchief so far down her throat it takes her two minutes to cough it up, and says, Be still, or I'll strike you. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> that line could not have come from a fan of the books. And that's the problem with this series summed up. It was clearly made by non-fans. It was made by jaded filmmakers hoping to cash in on a famous title and the popularity of late 90s James Bond without doing any more work than maybe reading the backs of the books. The books should have been easy to get right. Pimpernel had been done well at least three times before. Both the Leslie Howard version and the musical starring Douglas Sills are wonderful, except that they're a little too short for their plots. Never hold back your step for a moment. Never doubt that your courage will grow. Hold your head even higher and into the fire we go. The Anthony Andrews version, which combines the two strongest books in the series, is perfect. Look how pretty Jane Seymour is as Percy's wife, Marguerite. And Percy's nemesis, Chauvelin, is played by young Magneto. Which is weird, because I thought when he was that age, he was Michael Fassbender. If the A&E producers had taken just two hours to watch this movie, they'd have had half the material they needed. A miniseries should have been a great vehicle for the Pimpernel stories. One episode per book. Sweet. But no. In fact, what we get is in many ways the opposite of the books. Quick example. In the books, we have a funny, energetic hero who has a secret identity as a lazy fop. In the miniseries, we have a somber, low-energy hero who has a secret identity as a funny, energetic fop. They seek him here. They seek him there. Those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven? Or is he in hell? That damned elusive Pimpernel! Now, I don't mind a few minor changes. If you want to make Marguerite and Chauvelin's implied romantic past explicit, fine. If you want to change Chauvelin's first name from Armand to Paul, because Marguerite's brother is also named Armand, and that's confusing. Cool! If you want to make Marguerite's backstory more dramatic, or cut out the scene where Percy disguises himself as an anti-Semitic stereotype, that's great. Small changes are part of the adaptation process. But oh god, we're not even five minutes into this mess when we're introduced to Richard E. Grant's Percy, and the shark gets jumped, and then has a handkerchief shoved down its throat. For context, here's how some better adaptations have introduced Percy. Here's Leslie Howard in disguise as an old woman. Yeah, this says Citizeness Renault and Grandson. Where's the grandson? He's in the cart, poor darling. Huh? What's the matter with him? He's got the plague. Oh, oh. oh yes. I don't think I should get him alive as far as Charles Bois. Here's Anthony Andrews disguised as an old man. Let me see inside those coffins. What, open the coffins? You heard me. All right. Here. Do as he says. <laughs> Take him back! What's the matter, Sergeant? Lost your sense of humor. Get out of here. Go on, clear out. Oh, the other two are even prettier. Just get out of here. Go on. All right, all right. Get out! And here's Richard E. Grant in disguise. Barge will take you to the coast. Good luck, mademoiselle. Oh, Lord. Really? What is this? Was the costume shop out of horizontal stripes and Hamburglar masks? The books revolved around Percy's amazing disguises. Half the fun for the reader was trying to guess which characters would turn out to be Percy in disguise. 
He turned out to be so many people that Chauvelin, late in the series, became crazy paranoid and had one of his servants branded so Percy couldn't replace him. Percy replaced him anyway because he's awesome! Even the Blackadder version got the disguise thing right. I rescued the Count, killed the guards, jumped the moat, ran to Versailles, where I climbed into Mr. Robespierre's bedroom leaving him a small tray of milk chocolates and an insulting note. This is an incredible story, worthy of the Scarlet Pimpernel himself. Well, I wouldn't know. I, on the other hand, would, because your sister... <laughs> I, on the Scarlet Pimpernel. Uh-oh. <laughs> But in this miniseries, a scarf is the best we get, and he abandons that by the next scene. Instead of disguises, he once in a while pulls out a Da Vinci-esque device and uses it to escape, but mostly he prefers to stab, like Wolverine. By which I mean, in the climax, he stabs a woman. Except unlike Wolverine, Percy stabs his female foe to death after making fun of her for having lesbian identity issues. I find myself winning, and that's amusing. And how do you find yourself? Or perhaps you haven't to this marvelous establishment where everyone can enjoy good company, make merry, and be themselves. And it's the climax not of a single episode, but of the whole series. This is an outrage! Everything about this is wrong. It's supposed to be a period fantasy adventure. Instead, it's a gritty crime drama. There's cussing. He says his name is uh, Chauvelin. Oh, does he? But he's covered in pig shit and so is the man with him. There's sex. Gross sex. There's Die Hard level violence. All those things I am okay with if I'm watching Die Hard. If I'm watching The Scarlet Pimpernel, it's because I want happy endings and whimsy, and I want my Prince Charming hero. The Percy Blakeney I know never fails. Once he promises to save someone, it's like Sherlock Holmes taking a case. You don't know how he's gonna succeed, but he will. As opposed to Richard E. Grant's character, who fails constantly. Look at him swear to protect this poor girl. We'll get you a women up. You're going to be safe. A few minutes later, bam, dead in a bathtub. In fact, the second time we see Percy, he fails to rescue a member of his own team. Oh, they escape, just in time for his friend to die, of torture wounds. It's been a while since I read the books, but I don't think Percy ever lost a team member, certainly not to torture. And I know for a fact that Lord Anthony Dewhurst didn't die of being shot in the face by Chauvelin! Oh my god! Tony! You were supposed to have your own book! We haven't even talked about the casting. It's all wrong, but I'll only take a minute with it because it's the least of our problems. Apparently in England, Richard E. Grant is considered cute, sexy, and lick the mirror handsome. <laughs> to me, he seems like an okay looking guy who spent a few days decomposing at the bottom of a well. He's not who I would cast as a huge, blonde, classically handsome Superman type. He should have been Chauvelin, and the guy playing Fox should have been Percy, and Minette should have been Marguerite. Don't get me wrong, the Marguerite actress is beautiful for a 38-year-old, but she's playing a 25-year-old. Still, it could have worked. The supporting cast are all fantastic, especially Suzanne Burtish as La Touraine, Denise Black as Madame Guillotine, and Ronan Vibert as Robespierre. And we all know, next to Wizards, Britain's main export is ugly sex symbols. So, given the right script, these people could have made me happy. But the scripts are a jumbled mess. Rather than take one episode per book, the writers put elements from as many as four books in one episode. And I mean elements, not plots. For example, they went, Hey, Chauvelin has a secret daughter, let's use that. But instead of an innocent waif who needs to be rescued by Percy, they made the daughter a killer bitch who's off doing her own completely different thing. And they added in stuff of their own, like this red mask nonsense. And they made completely random changes. Like for no reason, the name of a prominent family is changed from St. Luke to Rochambeau. Well, guess we'll have to Rochambeau for it. What do you mean? Well, first I kick you in the nuts as hard as I can, then you kick me in the nuts as hard as you can. I'll go first. <laughs> there are a few things to like about this series, I guess. The production values are good. The sets are impressive for TV, mostly because they use real buildings in Prague. The acting is fine, and there's exactly one magnificent scene. In the second episode, Marguerite, because she's Lois Lane, has walked into the hands of the enemy. In order to save her, Percy pretends to be Chauvelin. No disguise, but at least he's acting. And Marguerite catches on and helps him. Together they manage to convince Madame Guillotine, or as the English apparently pronounce it, Guillotine, that the real Chauvelin is the Scarlet Pimpernel. 
See, that's the Scarlet Pimpernel I know and love. Too bad that's one scene in three episodes. The rest of the time, as you watched, you could almost hear the meddling producer behind the writers yelling, Darker! Explodier! What's with all this dialogue? When is somebody gonna get shot? The second season, or as the English pronounce it, series, was never released for sale in North America, and I wasn't enthusiastic enough to hunt it down. It's possible you'll be able to enjoy the series if you are not a fan of the books, though I doubt it. There isn't a character likable enough to root for, and Percy without his disguises is just a half-competent wannabe hero with a sword. I was the target audience for this miniseries, and it only made me sad. It sucked so much that there was no point breaking down the grades. F. Oh, if anyone needs me, I'll be in the angry dome. See you next time.